Uh, you guys have been on Bourbon Street, yeah? 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 Okay, awesome. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't stress this enough. Bourbon Street in the 50s wasn't what it is today. It wasn't all the sleazy strip clubs you see here today. It was much classier. It was burlesque clubs. And if you're confused about what burlesque is, we like to say uh, it's kind of like stripping, but it's a little more choreography, a little less gynecology if you catch my trip. Um, now, um, this burlesque dancer, her name was Legitana de la Luna, which translates to Pussycat of the Moon, and that is the best burlesque stage name ever, if you ask me. By the way, you guys know what we call a ghost stripper in the city of New Orleans? A poltergeist? <laughs> that's the stupidest joke I'll make all night. Actually, that's a lie. I'm gonna, I got tons of them. Anyway, uh, Miss Luna, every single night when she walks home from Bourbon Street back to her apartment, she claims to see the same man for about a week standing on this corner right here. Now, she describes the man as olive skin, white blonde hair, piercing blue eyes, matching the song's description. And she claims that he is staring at her intensely, like through her soul, right? Now, she goes to the police department and she explains to them her situation. And being the helpful organization that they are, they say, yeah, it's probably just some weirdo following you over from the bar. I wouldn't think too much of it, right? Uh, so she kind of has an out of sight, out of mind experience when it comes to the whole ordeal. That is until one night she's finishing up a shower, she opens up her bathroom door, and she sees this man sitting on the foot of her bed. So she does what any good southerner would do. She goes to the top drawer of her dresser and she grabs a loaded 38 pistol out from the top drawer. She swings around to take a shot. Poof, this man is gone, vanishes into thin air. She is thoroughly freaked out and moves out the next day. Um, now in the early 1990s, there was a lovely old lady named Miss Nina Neves who lived on the penthouse floor of the property. Uh, now she was an avid gardener and she would be gardening in her courtyard and apparently converse with a man on the other side of the courtyard walls who would claim that he was the first thing planted in her garden, okay? Very creepy. Now, uh, she and the resident inspector of the Gardette La Prep Mansion would eventually become best friends, apparently, and go back up to her apartment together and watch Law and & Order and Wheel of Fortune. She was an old hippie and made really good brownies, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> now, unfortunately, Miss Nina has since passed, okay? Her daughter has now inherited the penthouse apartment, and she is known to overlook the balcony and see the same man shambling around the courtyard. Now, it is a residential property, so I unfortunately cannot take you guys into the courtyard. However, if you guys were to go on Google Earth whenever you see fit and type in Gardette La Prep Mansion and zoom in on the courtyard of the property, you will notice that there is in fact a small garden in the middle, and for some reason, nothing grows in this garden except for one thing, and it is a fig tree. This fig tree, obviously native to Turkey or the Ottoman Empire at the time. Now this fig tree is growing up out of this garden at a 45 degree angle with five distinct branches. And a lot of people say it really does look like a human hand. Mm. Very creepy. Now my big question for you guys right now is, uh, anyone looking for a place to rent? No? You'll have a roommate that knows no boundary of personal space, I promise. And I'm told he likes feet too, very creepy. Mm. Any questions? All right, we're going to be moving on to our next stop, going this way. Right. Hey, lady, you want to go to Nola? Let me see your cap. Show them about the cap, man. Okay, this is the real cap right here, Voodoo Lounge. Vibing. Bye, we're in the zone. We're in the zone, no cap. Hey, no cap. Hey, fuck up. Uh, so, how are we enjoying our time in New Orleans so far? Turn oh, up. Awesome. Lit. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, now, uh, you guys are drinking, y'all guys got a, y'all Super One Hurricanes at the bar, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah! Best way to see spirits on this tour is to, in fact, consume them. Uh, hell yeah! No. Oh. no, hell yeah! <laughs> uh, how are we enjoying the food here, most importantly? Where you're rolling, right? Yeah, yeah. You go home 10, 15 pounds heavier, you did something wrong, okay? <laughs> um, has anyone eaten at this restaurant right here? Yeah. No! This is called Muriel's Jackson Square. And it's one of my favorite restaurants in the city of New Orleans. I love the place. It's awesome. It's very swanky, very hot cuisine. 
Uh, I highly recommend the blackened alligator if you guys decide to check it out. It is it awesome. It really, really does taste like chicken. Alligator. I know everyone will tell you anything that's not chicken tastes like chicken, but it really does. It's awesome. It's really good. Um, now, think about mirrors. It wasn't always just a restaurant, okay? Uh, in the year 1822, it was the home of a man named Pierre Lapartie Jordan. Sounds important, right? All those fancy French names? Total loser. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you guys. Uh, so Pierre was two things. He was a family man and an avid gambler. And I can't stress this enough, not necessarily in that order. Uh, any poker players here? Anybody play poker? You don't have to play poker well, you just play poker at all. Yeah, you know, right, yeah, okay. He's like, yeah, hey, baby. Um, but, um, now, Pierre one night is at a very high stakes poker game at a local hotel about two blocks away from here, right? Uh, and unfortunately for Mr. Pierre, he has run out of all the money that he brought with him. Now, keep in mind, this is early 1800s, so this is before the days of. Venmo and Cash App and Zelle and stuff like that. So what you had on you is what you had, okay? Uh, now, like I said, unfortunately, he has lost it all this night, okay? Now, if you're like Mr. Pierre and you have a crippling gambling addiction, the last hand that you're dealt, you believe, is a shot to win all of your money back, <laughs> win back all of your losses. You've been drinking a good little bit of red wine that evening, uh, and you also own a very nice house. How do you think this man's going to stay in the game, okay? Takes the deed to his house and slaps on the table like it's no one's business. Apparently they just carried those around in their pocket back then, right? Uh, now, unfortunately, the man sitting next to Pierre has a four of a kind, okay? So, not only has he lost all of his money, but he also has just lost his house in the process of trying to win all of his money back. Now, Pierre, very drunkenly and depressingly, stumbles from the hotel back to his humble abode, goes straight up to his study without saying a word to his wife or children uh, about how he basically just lost their home. Uh, like I said, goes straight up to his study, uh, pours himself his favorite French glass of wine, finds himself his favorite French rope, and hangs himself in his study, okay? Now, since then, this building has been a couple things. It's been a furniture store. It's also been a uh, facility that manufactures like the dry pops you find in a supermarket. You guys know what I'm talking about? Uh, and I would love to tell you, we know that we had ghosts in the building at the time because the Haunted Spaghetti Factory sounds like the stupidest episode of Scooby-Doo like ever. Uh, but we don't get a whole lot of paranormal reports until the year 2001 when Muriel's open. The first week that they're open, patrons, chefs, and servers all alike report seeing the same things. We had glass on one end of the bar, they'll very big quickly and violently slide to the other end just to break the wall behind it, shadows moving to and from, no one there to cast them, and people being touched and shoved. But most importantly, okay, the final day that they are open in that first week, they are doing that week's inventory, right? Uh, the general manager decides to check out the wine room, opens up the wine room door and sees that all of the bottles had actually uncorked themselves and wine has flooded this cellar. Now keep in mind, guys, this is about $19,000 of very vintage, very nice wine. Uh, so naturally, the owners of Muriel's, they contact the medium and they host a seance. Now at the seance, a voice is channeled. And the voice says, I am Pierre Lapardie Jordan. You're throwing these massive parties in my home every single night. And I have yet to receive my invitation. Okay? Now to be clear, homie's not mad at his former home. is now a fancy restaurant. Okay? He looks at a place like this. Sees the white tablecloths, copious amounts of food, wine, music. It's a dinner party as far as he's concerned. He's a socialite in the early 1800s, something that he's very used to. And he just wants to know where his damn invite is, okay? Now, ever since that night, the owners of Muriel's, in fact, set a table in the back of the restaurant. Now, it is a five-person table. However, only four people can make a reservation at this table. You guys want to guess why? That fifth spot is reserved for Monsieur Pierre, and he does not like when you sit in his seat. He's kind of like Dad on Thanksgiving, you know, get out of my chair, I'm just trying to watch football, leave me alone. Um, but for 50 extra dollars on top of your normal dining tab, you in the city of New Orleans can dine with the dead. Now, if you guys choose to do that, okay, uh, he is known more often than not to show up in your photographs while sitting at his table as a full-bodied apparition, and that is more often than not. I'm not joking when I say that, so over a 50% chance. Uh, he is a polite Frenchman, so you must ask him very politely in French. Uh, Monsieur, un photo s'il vous plaît. But if you've been drinking a good little bit that evening, uh, you can't remember that. Hey dude, lay selfie, click, usually works just fine. Um, <laughs> funny story about Muriel's. Uh, so I used to know a server that worked here, his name is Kevin, okay? And uh, Kevin one night, was in charge of setting Pierre's table. Now, regardless if there's a reservation set at this table or not, uh, there is always at least one wine glass at this table. The reason why is because regardless if anyone sits there, they do pour Monsieur Pierre a very nice, very expensive glass of French wine. Uh, and I kid you not, every single morning when they come in to open, uh, some of that wine is gone. Now, uh, Kevin was in charge of setting Pierre's table. 
okay? And he was a big skeptic, did not believe in ghosts at all. And he used to hang out and drink at Voodoo Lounge, where we left from. Uh, which, if you don't believe in ghosts, why are you hanging out with a bunch of ghost poor guys? You know what I mean? But, uh, big skeptic, we used to rag on the board, everything like that. So one night, like I said, he's in charge of setting his table, and uh, he could not fathom pouring this very expensive glass of wine for this very non-existent person. Uh, so what he does before his shift is he goes to CVS, buys a little bottle of like $6 red, okay? And uh, decides to swap out the wine. He takes Pierre's nice stuff, puts it in his book bag, and pours him the very cheap stuff that he just bought from CVS. Uh, he didn't like that too much, because uh, literally later on that night, he is also serving a table uh, that is a bachelorette party. It's about 12 ladies dressed in eyes, right? And he's carrying a tray of champagne flutes. He's right by the table, he feels someone push him, all of the champagne flutes fly all over the private party. It is a whole thing. They need to pay for their dry cleaning. They send Kevin home early from his shift. Uh, and in the city of New Orleans, if you get sent home early from your shift, you don't go home. You just go to a closed bar and you drink about the situation. Uh, so he comes back to the bar uh, and uh, he tells us all about uh, his experience. Uh, so what we tell him is, uh, do you believe now, jackass, I believe, is the bartender's words that he chose. Uh, but on that note, you guys want to see Pierre's table? All right, it's right on the corner. Oh, shit. Let go. Ready, baby? Ready to set Pierre's table? Why don't give me that to drink? Oh, come on, y'all. She just throw it away liquor. She just throw it away liquor, y'all. That's Jackson Square right there. table right now indicating that no one has booked a reservation there that night so get on it guys um, but like I said regardless if there is a reservation they will <laughs> hey, it's table world do y'all believe that oh that's cap do you believe it or it's cap <laughs> 